Ah, so it's happening. What's happening, you say? Getting the tools from Harbor Freight. <laughs> Van, I've been running around with my head cut off. Just trying to make everything work. Down the one car, it's just, life is a mess right now. But I'm doing everything I can to keep the mess at a minimum, if you know what I mean. So, man, I cannot wait for all of this to be over and done with. I'm over it. Ah, uh, see, completely forgot about that. Ah, uh, I gotta run back in the house real quick. It's nothing crazy, it's just something to do with, I think the, uh, what do you call it, coolant, temperature sensor. I think it's starting to go bad, so now and again, it throws a code for the coolant temp being too low, but it's always something. It's always gotta be something. Come on, get in there. There we go. Well, it's positive, it's the same codes. Coolant thermostat, coolant temp below thermostat regulating temperature. Yeah. And you can see engine coolant temps 163 degrees, but I think that's just because the sensor is reporting wrong. It popped up after like a good solid 15 minutes of driving and some of that being highway. So there's, there's no reason that the temp would be that low still. All right, now I need some AC. Yeah, see, we're good to go now. For the most part, this car has 93,396 miles. I mean, this it's been a solid car for the most part. Only like your normal wear and tear items have been replaced and normal like just electronics aging and wearing out and whatnot. But I mean, this generation focus has always been pretty solid. So I can't complain considering that uh, I spent four times more on that car and it crapped out at 50,000 miles and we're still going strong at 90,000. And these cars are good for 200 all day long. They don't make them like they used to, but then again, yeah, I, I, I get it. It's, it's not turbocharged. That's kind of the benefit of non-turbocharged cars is generally they'll last longer, but not nearly as powerful or fun to drive. I mean, honestly, this engine is pretty zippy. This car would actually be pretty fun with some like bolt-ons and a tune, maybe like full exhaust. Like this engine's got some pep, really does. It really comes alive up top too. And if it was a stick shift, uh, you know, automatic holds it back. Holds this engine back a lot. You know, it's not like the newer front wheel drive automatics where you got six, eight speeds or nine speeds or whatever. This is just four speeds. Focus power! What a force to be reckoned with. I'm serious, this thing can squeal the wheels. Told ya. <laughs> All right, enough of that. On the Harbor Freight. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, torque wrench required. Oh, cool. Okay, so this is it right here. It's not really big enough to get some of the bigger parts I wanted in here. I definitely could fit the chains and stuff. I don't know. Is it worth it? That's $90. Yeah, because I, like I can still fit some of the other stuff in there. So. Ah, so we're back in the car. We got parts cleaner and uh, if I can grab it. Ah, uh, yes, the torque wrench. Those look pretty nice. Not gonna lie. Nicest tool I have probably. Like the nicest single tool I have. Not too shabby. And uh, actually, thankfully, I did wait until Labor Day because there was a 25% coupon that was able to be used on the uh, torque wrench. I wish I could have used it also on the parts cleaner, but that's like one of those excluded brands they have. But because I could use it on the torque wrench, you can see the original price was $164.99 with the coupon. It took off $41.25 and brought it down to $123.74, which is the same price as the Icon non-digital torque wrench I was originally gonna get. So, spent the same amount of money, got a better torque wrench. Ah, that's why patience is important. And, um, you know, and just being very strategic about where you spend your money because uh, that's what you learn to do when you ain't got a lot of it. <laughs> but no, I'm pretty happy with all that. So, I'm gonna go ahead, get back home and um, I guess we can unbox the torque wrench, why not? Get that all set up and going, but mainly get the parts cleaner up and going and start cleaning some of the parts we have laying around. So that would be a good thing to get done before I end this video. 
Yeah, so I'm back home. Thought it'd be kind of cool to do a little, just quick unboxing of both these things. Obviously, this is the, the crown jewel of either product. And uh, opening it up here. Oh, wow. Okay, so I knew this came with a carrying case, <laughs> but I honestly thought it was just this plastic lid which I had sipped it through multiple wrenches because some of these were cracked. Um, no, that, that's not it. That's just for display purposes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Take back here. All right, it's a manual well. Cardboard. Oh, there's batteries in there too. Good thing it does come with batteries. That's nice, I guess. <laughs> One, two, buckle my shoe. All right, there she blows. And I ain't talking about your mom. Oh, let's see. Yeah, feels pretty nice in the hands. Got some girth to it, you know what I'm saying? Like nice thick shaft you know just it, it feels real nice it really does feels good in the hand you know this is like some plastic like it's but it's a nice plastic it's not like some crappy plastic like i could i could definitely i could definitely use this in more than one way if you know what i'm saying <laughs> like it feels pretty pretty solid i think we need to put batteries in it i don't even know where the batteries go Certificate of calibration. Insert two of them lays. Use coin to twist battery cap at the end. Is there a battery cap? Oh shoot, look at that. There is a battery cap at the end. I use a coin when you have a garage full of useful tools. Oh uh, yeah, look at that. Dang, Toshiba batteries. Wow, now that, that's interesting. Super heavy duty, mm hmm, duty. <laughs> I guess they go in that way. We'll find out here in a second. Do we have power? No, they must go in the other way. <laughs> okay. Oh, nothing. Okay. I'm pretty sure the batteries are in there right this time. Uh, Harbor Freight giveth. Harbor Freight taketh away. Let me double check one more time for the batteries. Oh, there we go. We have life. I, I had it right the first time. I just didn't have the uh, cap on the back all the way. You know, small errors. Wow, that's a very nice beep. Okay, how do I turn it off? Oh, you know what? I think these it auto powers off. I don't know how long it auto powers, but I think that's the case. We'll just set this back in here for the moment because we're not using it. But uh, the case is actually really nice. It's a nice, nice rugged case. You know, for 120 bucks, I'm actually not uh, not upset. But the, you know, obviously, how it performs doing its job is where it counts. So. Well, we'll figure that out sometime soon. But now for the more important tool of the day is this ultrasonic parts cleaner. So yeah, let's pop this bad boy open. Got her manual. Uh, hold on. All right, there we go. And I realized the uh, power cable is uh, detachable. Oh, this uses one of those universal power cables. A lot of music equipment uses these kind of cables. Interesting. Oh yeah, peeling it back. I like going unprotected. And there we are. A little tray there, like that. Put your parts in there and away you go. Actually, see a lot of the parts I want to clean, you know, small parts like this, look at that. Perfect, I can only probably fit two or three in there at a time, depending on what it is, but it will work exactly for these parts. In the end, the money I would save not having to rebuy those parts again would have been what this cost anyway, if not um, more. 
not a bad deal and I'll have this for future projects. Um, you never know. Never thought I would have one of these as part of my tool set, but here we are. I actually gotta do some research. I don't even know what you use in these for cleaning. Let's see, instructions. Do not clean with flammable or corrosive liquids. So, can't use gasoline, got it. <laughs> well, after some brief research, I think I've discovered what I'm gonna use as a cleaning solution for the ultrasonic cleaner and nothing more. Distilled water and distilled white vinegar, which I happen to have a little bit of this. We I use this a lot for cleaning. Let's get a cord plugged in here somewhere. Uh, right in there. Oh yeah, get it in there. Okay, good. Uh, being very inappropriate in this video. My apologies if you're laughing. You're welcome. Cool. And that should be good. Oh yeah. Woo! I don't like that sound. Oh, that was sketchy. I guess that's why they give you a lid because it makes that really high pitched frequency. Let's see if that helps with that. That sounded sketch. Okay, that's better. I guess we go ahead and start cleaning this. So I have to get the bolts out and gotta get the sensor out of there real quick. Easy does it. Got that. Pull out the gasket here. Cool. All right. Drop that in there like that. See, it's not fully submerged. Maybe going the other way. Yeah, the other way is better. Gonna put our lid on the right way, not backwards, which I've done twice already. And then turn it on, see what happens. I'm telling you, that is so sketch, that sound. Actually, it's bothering my ears, to be honest with you. Holy crap, you can actually see stuff moving around in there. I'm gonna let this do its thing for however long it's gonna need, and we'll come back and check and see what the water looks like when it's done. And then we'll see how much gunk it really did pull off. The water definitely has changed color. Let's go ahead and pop the lid off here. Oh, wow. I'm not sure how hot this water is. I, I didn't realize this had a heating function, which I ran it on a second time with the heating function. And okay, it, it didn't get all the heavy grime off. I can just take a wire brush and get that stuff off on the outside. I was more or less about anything on the inside. And how does the inside look? Looks pretty good. I'll do a final like clean over of all this stuff with some brake parts cleaner. I think we'll be good to go. I can see some of that oil dropping out in there. Man, I think I'm gonna like this little thing. It's a nice little tool. I mean, look at that water. Look how cloudy that is. And that's just from these two parts. So I think maybe I'm gonna switch from vinegar since I ran out of it and go to just a little bit of uh, the greaser wherever I put it, somewhere in this garage. <laughs> And I think that will be a little bit better for cleaning these parts up. But I mean, so far it's doing something and there's actually some, looks like small little bits of something. I mean, stuff floating around, but there's also stuff sitting at the bottom. You can't really tell. And that's why someone recommended this to me because you know, anything that the oil touches like the timing chain or any of these components, if there was any small bit of debris of metal that made its way into there, it could still just be sitting on there. You will never see it. So this will loosen up any of those small little pieces and, and that's good. So we got a lot more to clean up, but I'm not gonna bore you with that on camera. Obviously I'm gonna be doing that on my own time here and we'll get a lot of that cleaned up. So we'll get to that point when that time comes, but yeah, pretty happy with that. And then sooner or later, we're gonna get to check out and see how nice the torque wrench is, but that's not yet, and we'll be waiting for that. So until that video comes, I think it's gonna wrap it up here for this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share with everyone you know. If you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a lookout for next Cars Created video.